Peace family, y'all know who it is. It's Bakari Lumumba, back once again, the progenitor of LumumbaSpeaks.com, a black empowerment initiative where we believe we could gain a competitive advantage for always betting on black. I'm back with another video, but before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button, as well as the notification bell so you can be updated on future videos. Before we get started also, as you know, I got that HBO special that help your boy out. Make sure you hit subscribe, share with your friends and well-wishers so that we can hit a, reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. So we're back today, July 2nd, 2022, celebrating the 97th birthday of Africa's lost leader, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's first legally elected prime minister, and a man that was known as the Malcolm X of Africa. I'm talking none other then the man, the myth, the legend, the martyr for the cause of African redemption at home and abroad, Pan-African nationalist, Patrice Emery Lumumba. If you don't know who Patrice Emery Lumumba is, this video should help you gain a, uh, a, least, a base level knowledge about Africa's lost leader. Patrice Lumumba was born July 2nd, 1925, and what was then known as the Belgian Congo. In the aftermath of King Leopold's, what I would argue, Holocaust, his crimes against humanity as a great African-American, George, watch George, um, great African-American, George Washington Williams, who we all know was a Baptist minister, historian, and of course, um, investigator of the atrocities that took place in the Congo under the um, regime of one King Leopold II. Um, but we also need to talk about why Lumumba is important, um, why the Congo is important. Many people may be unaware that the Congo um, is a large Central African country the size of Western Europe. Um, and the Congo owns 60%, holds 60% of the world's coltan. If you don't know coltan as a mineral that's used to operate electromagnetic devices such as a flat screen, laptop, uh, smartphone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, even the uranium that was used to build the atomic bomb that was dropped on Japan during World War II on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, the uranium that the United States government used to build those uh, atomic bombs during the Manhattan Project, which was the name of the uh, top secret um, program that they had to build those atomic bombs, they got the uranium from the Congo. Uh, many people argue that the, the Congo is the world's richest country in terms of natural resources. We're talking about not at 24 million, not 24 billion, but it's estimated that the wealth of the Congo in terms of natural resources are estimated to be at $24 trillion, right? And so what, one of the things that Patrice Lumumba wanted to do was not only gain independence from the Belgians, right, for the atrocities that they, that they had committed, but also wanted the people to benefit from the wealth of the land. We know, unfortunately, one of the major issues that we find throughout the African world is that African people are not able to benefit not only from our labor in the manner that we should, and that's a global issue that stems all the way back to, of course, the Holocaust of enslavement in the Ma'afa. The, um, and for those of you who do not know what the Ma'afa is, the Ma'afa is the African Holocaust of colonialism, imperialism, racism, and slavery. But what we also find out, unfortunately, after colonialism, there was the implementation of neo-colonialism, right, in which the former colonial powers were still able to benefit monetarily from the extraction of raw materials from, of course, the African continent throughout the African world. Um, so this is a major issue that Patrice Lumumba wanted to fight against and to address. Unfortunately, even though he was successful in get, helping the, the uh, Congolese people gain their independence, from Belgium, and I believe that the Independence Day in the Congo was the 30th of June, 1960. Please correct me, fans and family, if I'm wrong on that. Um, but what ended up taking place was, unfortunately, it just ushered in the era of neocolonialism. And of course, Lumumba, unfortunately, was assassinated due to the stratagem of the British government, the American government, um, the uh, the British government, the American government, the Belgian government, and of course the United Nations. And this is why when John F. Kennedy was killed, Malcolm X talked about chickens coming home to rooster. He talked about um, all of the killings and the coups and assassinations that America had been involved in throughout the world to prevent people of color, particularly African people, from gaining their right to, to what freedom and self-determination. And he said that this violence that they've implemented throughout the world has come back 
to choke and take away one of their greatest chickens or what was perceived to be one of the greatest chickens, of course, former President John F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And so he, ta he even talked about the assassination of Patrice Lumumba as the violence that America would portray out onto the world. And it's come back to what? Uh, it's violent and silly tentacles have come back to choke the lives of what was considered to be one of the greatest presidents in America uh, during that time and in the other 20th century. Um, and so, unfortunately, uh, when he... Patrice Lumumba was killed. Many people may not understand uh, the graphic nature in which he was killed. Of course, Patrice Lumumba was a, was a great, he was a great orator, right? Uh, he, had, he was gifted with the words. He was extremely loquacious. And so oftentimes he was able to sway the public. And part of the reason why he was able to become the first legally elected prime minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo was he had, he was able to, he had, he, was, he had the gift of gab, as they say. And he was able to what, sway the public to, of course, vote him and his party into office. Um, Unfortunately, this um, also led to his demise. Unfortunately, um, when when he was captured, he was uh, tied up and forced to eat his own speeches. And then they, of course, shot him several times and then cut his body up and dissolved it in acid. Um, but however, the world did not find out about the assassination of Patrice Lumumba until about three weeks or a month afterwards. When the world was made aware of this, Malcolm X had an impromptu, I, I guess we could say, press conference at the United Nations headquarters. And Malcolm X declared that Patrice Lumumba was the greatest black man to ever walk the African continent. Um, and I think that's one of the greatest uh, compliments you can ever receive from uh, when al Haji Malik al Shabazz states that you're one of the greatest black men to ever um, walk the African continent. However, Patrice Lumumba's legacy lives on. As many people may know, my uh, last name comes from, of course, Patrice Lumumba. As we know, many African people in the West, deaf and decadent in the Western diaspora, when we look to shed um, those. Uh, colonial and imperial and of course slave labels of having a um, slave master's name and other things like that we tend to take on an african name but also the surname of one of our great heroes great ancestors and so of course many years ago i took the name of the last name the surname of patrice lumumba to make sure that i carry that legacy on and that's a legacy of audacious self-assertion in the face of white hegemony by any means necessary um i also think it's very important that we take this time to reflect on his life what can we do of course, to restore African people to our traditional greatness and do some reading uh, and find out a little bit more about Patrice Lumumba. So I have some books from my, of course, my library. My, as many people know, I am a budding bibliophile. Um, and so I have two, a couple of books here. One is Patrice Lumumba, Africa's Lost Leader. Please, if you have the time, you can check this out probably at your local library, get on Amazon for cheap. Um, check this out. Um, also, I have The Assassination of, of Lumumba. Another great read if you want to learn about some of the details regarding what led to its assassination, how it took place, and once again, how the United Nations, the Belgian government, the British government, and the American government were complicit in working to conspire to have him assassinated. Many people argue that Patrice Lumumba's assassination, unfortunately, was made one of the major uh, assassinations of the 20th century, as unfortunately, the Congo has really been considered a failed state since his assassination. And oftentimes when we look at the goal of neocolonialism is to destabilize a nation so that Western powers can come in and take the natural resources. We're even seeing that today in, of course, Libya. And then last but not least, this is one of the newest books, but this is Dancing in the Glory of Monsters, The Collapse of the Congo and the Great War of Africa. And this book really goes into detail about how the Congo became a failed state. And it talks explicitly, explicitly about the CIA's role and orchestrating the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. So that's all that I have today. I uh, just want to take time to honor the life and the legacy of Africa's lost leader, uh, the Malcolm X of Africa, of course, um, the first legally elected prime minister of Africa, that is one Patrice Emery Lumumba. We love you, we miss you, um, but we know that you're here with us in spirit and in truth, and we're gonna do everything that we can to make sure that one day the Congo and the, all of the African world is the world that you that you envision it being, and that's the world in which African people are able to live their lives unabated of a, a foreign domination, and of course, in, in a manner in which, and, and that we can live our lives in a manner in which we're able to truly benefit from the natural wealth of our land. Until next time, you all know what to do. Peace.